<laughs> Hello, I'm Hingers, and this is episode 22 of Good Game Well Played, your weekly guide to esports. It's been a very big and very busy week, so let's get right into the news. The CEO of professional esports team Natus Vincere, Alexander Kokonovsky, has formed an unofficial union of esports teams. The Ukrainian national Kokonovsky has written to several major tournament organisers, including ESL, DreamHack and MLG, on behalf of a loose conglomerate of teams in order to explain minimum standards for tournaments in the future. The email, which was leaked on efrag.net, was written on behalf of 10 North American and European teams, including heavyweights like Team Liquid, Fnatic and Ninjas in Pyjamas. It primarily relates to playing and tournament conditions for Dota 2 and CSGO events, as well as Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone competitions. Most notable amongst these conditions is that the teams will decline any Dota 2 and CSGO events without LAN finals, except for certain US teams who will travel for minimum prize money. Online tournaments have been plagued with DDoS attacks and issues of instability in the past, including in recent times at the International earlier this year. But of course, one of the big advantages for... Oh, okay, we've got some time to talk about that. <laughs> as well as this, the teams are asking for tournaments to cover their accommodation and travel costs as separate to prize money, and the email lays out the best practices for media coverage before, during and after events. These changes are meant to come into effect in 2016. However, at the time of writing, none of the tournaments have responded to the demands. Because of the teams this letter represents, this new union will no doubt have more sway in CSGO than in Dota 2. In order for the union to take on more prominence in the Dota 2 world, it will have to garner the support of other teams around the world. For example, high profile Chinese teams who are currently represented by the Ace Alliance. Months out from the January 1st deadline, it's hard to say if teams will actually refuse to participate in tournaments that don't meet their standards in 2016. However, this kind of player and team representation is another step towards legitimacy in esports. And in Heroes of the Storm news, North American team Murloc Geniuses have turned to crowdfunding after being unable to find a sponsor for their trip to an upcoming tournament. The highly ranked HOTS outfit were trying to raise 2,000 US dollars to compete at the esports arena Heroes of the Storm Open this weekend, and they reached their goal within 24 hours of going live. That is insane. Standing underneath the boss, even trying to bait them into the stuns, but it won't matter because that core is toast, and Murloc Genius is just too old cognitive gaming. Crowdfunding has for a long time been a part of esports in various ways, whether it was tournaments raising prize money for competitions or streamers asking for donations in order to create content. However, crowdfunding has struggled to fully replace traditional sponsorship methods for a team. It'll be interesting to see if it will be sustainable to rely on crowdfunding in the long term. I mean, following on from Murloc Genius' success, will this be a more popular model moving forward? Space trading and combat game Elite Dangerous has announced a tournament after the game's release on Xbox One. The close quarter combat tournament will take place across PC, Mac and console platforms and will have a total prize budget of $100,000. However, according to the community post, this will include travel and accommodation costs. Mr. Kokonovsky would not be impressed. The final will take place in the UK and will have a $15,000 first place prize. There are no specific date details as of yet, but the tournament is open to all Elite Dangerous players, so you might as well give it a crack. And to StarCraft news, the 2015 Pro League has been decided in Korea. Tournament favourites SKT1 took out Jin Air Green Wings in the best of seven Team League series, 4-2 last week, to take home $42,000 US in prize money. Go SKT1! Incidentally, SK Telecom sponsors both the Pro League and the team that won the Pro League. Is it a conspiracy? I don't know. Meanwhile, in CSGO news, the 2015 World Championships took place in Belgrade over the weekend. 16 teams from around the world qualified for the global final, which was played by national and not unrestricted professional teams. France bested Poland 3-1 in the $50,000 US Grand Final. Congratulations, France! And to the League of Legends World Championship. The month-long finals in Europe continue as favourites dominated the second week of the group stage of play. After a strong start in the opening weekend, Cloud9 have dropped out of the competition as European giants Fnatic and AHQ progressed in Group B. And Fnatic take the first seed out of the group! The story of the tournament, however, was the emotional retirement of the most successful Western League of Legends player of all time. Dyrus from Team Solo Mid had an emotional exit interview from the tournament where he thanked his team, fans and the community for their support over the years and apologised for letting them down. I'm really sorry to all my fans that I let you down. Dyrus will be remembered as an incredibly laid-back player who travelled a lot with his pillow and spent many years wearing Bono-esque yellow glasses. 
That's all for this week. As always, get in touch via social media and let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Hang us out!